Hey, this is uh, Mead for a squared.com. Uh, this is the second of the Learn Art subreddit question and answers. Um, today's question is about photorealistic colors uh, with with uh, colored pencil. Um, specifically, uh, how do you even lay color down with colored pencil? Uh, and then after that, uh, how do you apply color theory? Does it even matter? What's color theory have to do with, with anything? And thirdly, how do you get uh, realistic colors instead of uh, really boring uh, single tone, like color wheel saturation colors? So um, to explore this, I have brought in a banana to draw, or <laughs> an apple rather. I was drawing a banana earlier. It's on the brain. But uh, so you can see uh, that when you're drawing this you have, uh, or when you're looking at, at an apple, you have uh, more color to deal with than you would if you're looking at a photograph. So essentially your opportunity if you're drawing is to create even more realistic colors than a photo can. Um, your second opportunity is that you can use marks and marks will show off your personality, they show off your drawing technique, they show off your style and your uniqueness. If you blend away all your marks, you've blended away all of your personality except for the objects that you choose to draw and um, I mean obviously most objects aren't really all that interesting until you draw them and bring out something that's interesting in them uh, through mark making. So, um, all right, enough looking at, at the uh, apple. Let's look at, uh, let's look at some paper. Uh, the first thing that, uh, that I want to do um, whenever I'm going to uh, make a drawing uh, in color is I'm going to I'm gonna um, kind of do uh, do some testing of my uh, color pencils. I'm using watercolor pencils, but I'm not gonna actually use water with them, just because I love the way that they uh, uh, apply to a surface. The of course the risk is is uh, you know, damage to the drawing eventually. Um, adjust some lighting. It's a little dark. Okay, that's a little bit better. All right, so got my red, got my yellow. Pretty sure this yellow is gonna do me well in this drawing. I'm pretty sure this red uh, is kind of a kind of a red orange, like cadmium. Um, so it's gonna it's gonna do nicely in the drawing. I've got this uh, like carmine red here. You know, it doesn't look necessarily like that's going to be one that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to put that aside. Um, right now I'm just doing like analysis looking at, at how these colors are going to relate. I've got this uh, this sort of um, Payne's gray and it just has nothing to do really too much with what's in there. So I'm going to put that aside. Um, what I'm trying to do is narrow it down to about six colors or, or fewer um, see, I've got this kind of like, uh, brownish, like maroon, uh, color. I think that might be useful. Um, I've got like a dark blue here. Um, it's probably not going to be all that, all that great. Maybe for the box that the apple's sitting on, I've got a, uh, like more of a, like a crazy violet color. Um. It may come in handy. Uh, I've got this kind of like uh, ochre color. Definitely awesome. What I try to do is usually pick out two blues, two reds, two yellows. Um, this blue, maybe. Uh, this blue, most likely, uh, is going to be good. 
It's going to help me create some, some of the violets that I see. Um, and, uh, Uh, really, that that might be it. I might use this crazy lime green in just like a teeny little spot later, so I'll keep that uh, keep that at hand. So I think what I'm going to do uh, when you're starting out in, in color um, and just kind of like sketching the layout of your of your drawing, um, you don't want to get too like um, too committed. So like I wouldn't start this sketch of a red and green apple with like a deep blue uh, because in the highlight areas it's definitely going to get messed up. Um, and when you're drawing a still life you definitely, an apple is not like round. <laughs> so, but it is somewhat spherical. So you're going to start kind of with, uh, I'm going to draw a little bit bigger than, than life size just so I have some like some room to work with. Um, and I'm going to start sort of with a general uh, outline of it. Knowing that this is going to change and get refined later. So I'm going to stay loose, stay light. Um, you probably don't even, you don't even really want to even see the, uh, the lines just yet. And when you're applying colored pencil, that's especially important. You want to start at, at like this low pressure heaven level uh, uh, so that it stays light and you can layer it up slowly. Then you kind of work as you're moving along into like the uh, man level, you know, like kind of uh, medium pressure. And then once you're at the end of the drawing, then you use earth. Just push down into the earth. So a little, a little simple system like that of, of pressure that you're putting on can save you a lot of trouble. So I'm going to shut up and draw here for a minute. What I'm immediately trying to do is find um, bulges in the apple that I can latch onto to give it a little more depth. Because otherwise it's going to get real flat really quickly. I'm drawing a little darker than I normally would just so you can kind of see it a little more. Alright, so I've kind of uh, already blocked out the, uh, the apple uh, in sort of this yellow ochre. Um, and I've done that so that it doesn't mess me up. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take uh, this uh, uh, cadmium and wherever there's, there's red, I'm going to go in at this, uh, at this gentle level. start to layer in just kind of using the side and what I'm going to do with these lines is kind of just uh, use the lines to to reinforce the form uh, maintaining the sort of circularity or the curvature rather of the apple And uh, at, these, at this stage, you don't really need to worry about it, like filling up all the space or being smooth. You're just kind of depositing color. Again, you don't want to get too dark with this, otherwise you're stuck with it. You can't do anything with it and it's going to frustrate you like no other. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kind of pick up a little more of the of the 
contour of the apple um, in red, where I know that I, where I know that the apple itself is going to be red, or red isn't going to mess me up uh, but too badly. But it's important not to get too heavy. I don't want to go any heavier than, than sort of the man level on that contour right now. Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to this, uh, this blue and maybe work into the ground a little bit. Just so I don't get messed up. If I use, if I use red here, it would kind of force me to go dark a little bit early. Um, and, I don't want to, and I don't want to do that just yet. In general, when you're drawing something, the shadows are going to be cooler in temperature, meaning that they're going to be uh, more on the blue scale than uh, than the object itself, which is going to be a little warmer, a little more uh, orange, a little more red, a little more yellow. So, um, yeah. So now what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take the same, uh, switch back and take the same red and kind of... Uh, squint my eyes at the apple and figure out just where the darkest darks are. Um, uh, so I'm seeing that it's kind of along here. There's kind of a sharp uh, shadow there. And it kind of tapers off and there's like a little bit of dark here. And then that's going to kind of go along here. And wrap around. So what I've done here is I've picked out the uh, core of the shadow or the edge of the shadow. Um, so I know that everything on this side is going to be dark, everything on this side is going to be light, uh, and I'm going to go uh, and I'm going to go from there. Anyway, so I picked the shadow core. I'm going to start working into the uh, into the shadow of the apple. Um, so I'm still going to continue working very lightly, but I'm going to switch from using red to using blue um, just so I can create kind of a uh, like a deep violet on here. And I'm going to start with a more intense blue um, just because I think uh, it's pretty interesting uh, to use um, a few intense colors over each other when you're um, when you're drawing like this. Uh, so what, what this is going to do is eventually uh, with enough layering this is going to create a nice um, uh, neutral color, something more um, realistic. If I were just to go and like draw red, 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 really dark, then I would have no opportunity to do that. So I'm going to pick uh, this kind of more intense, uh, intense violet. Start to layer a bit of that in somewhere. The general theory is that this apple, you know, being a red apple, you would think, oh, it's just, you're going to use red. But really, you want to use like uh, a whole bunch of different colors to approach. And overall, it'll look red because, you know, um, the predominant color is going to be red. But there's green, there's violet, there's blues, there's grays, there's browns. Um, and you just want to create this rich, natural color range. And a lot of this just comes from uh, your ability to uh, observe. And photographs kind of rob you of some of the, uh, the richness that you can observe. So you can see that this is becoming uh, pretty, pretty violet right now. And uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and... Uh, Start to find my shadow core in a couple of spots and use more of a, a neutral violet for that.
Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm noticing that this uh, violet is getting a little too violet, so I'm gonna knock some red back in there. Some of the red that I started with. Again, just kind of layering gently. Still not putting much much pressure on it, just enough to not just enough to make changes. Um, and I'm definitely rushing this. I would like to spend you know lots more time developing these colors, just going smoother and smoother and smoother, and just gently doing it. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Whenever you're at the shadow's edge, you kind of you do kind of want to. Um, draw through it so you get some more uh, more blending going on. Notice that I'm not even like half as dark you know as I could be going. Remember dark is like dark. Way darker than this. As I'm as I'm going, as I'm switching colors, I'm starting to block out areas uh, that I'm observing that are darker and lighter. Starting to, you know, develop the form a little bit. Ultimately, when you're drawing, everything comes back to comes back to forms. So everything that you want to do needs to support the three dimensionality of it. So even though this is violet right here, you can still see that it's like maintaining its nature as uh, definitely uh, red. Start to get a little more intense on the pressure. Here I'm moving into uh, sort of the man level, the middle level layers or middle level pressure. I'm gonna use a little more blue. I don't want to go to earth level till like maybe the last 10 seconds of the drawing. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna work uh, work into the green section, um, and I'm gonna start out with this uh, this ochre yellow, and not the uh, that provides sort of a basis for this. I'm not gonna use the intense yellow just yet, but I'm just gonna take everything that's green and I'm gonna block it in with this, and then go from there. So here's your color theory coming in. Uh, red and green, they're complementary uh, complementary colors, Christmas colors, so um, they're automatically what you call a complementary color scheme. Uh, that means they're directly opposed to each other on the color wheel, so you're automatically starting with, um, with a fairly balanced um, uh, color scheme. I think I'm gonna use uh, this, uh, a different blue here, this blue to kind of uh, create the green. So what you can do is you can take, uh, take your two colors and you can start to layer them over on the side and practice sort of how those are gonna, how those are gonna interact. 
I'm noticing that there's even some some blue in this apple right along here, which is kind of cool. There's some uh, there's some shadows that wrap around that are definitely cooler. The shadow of the of the stem itself, the stem itself being right here. Shadow is a little a little bluish. Make sure to get that in there. I'm going to start at an even lighter level and start to build up a green. And you don't have to be like too careful on contours or, or anything linear. Uh, the only spots you want to be careful about are uh, are just uh, you know pressure. So one thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm saving spots for the highlights. The highlights are going to be like right here. Um, and those are going to be my absolute white spots that are going to give this apple some depth. I just want to be sure to preserve those through the drawing. Next, I'm going to use a more intense yellow. I think the green is a little more intense. So you're not trying to create this like perfect ideal green. What you're trying to do is build up a green uh, that is interesting. That should always that should always kind of be the aim of a color drawing. You notice that each time you make a pass color is going to shift just a little bit, which is what you want. So as you practice and get better at this, you'll be able to kind of know how, the, how your favorite, um, the colors that you the pick, the pencils will interact. So whenever you find yourself getting stuck in one area and just working one area, you're neglecting everything else, so you want to be sure to come back and work another area. Ideally, what you want to do is make passes over the whole drawing, then come back and make some more passes. So one thing I can do even in this dark is I can take this yellow to neutralize it even a little bit more. So now I'm working with another complementary color scheme, which is uh, yellow and violet. And this is going to create kind of a black or a rich brown. Uh, if I were to just keep laying that, I can keep bringing it back to this, this overall reddish color though. Which is what I want to do.
definitely seeing some some more uh, orangey hues in this now that uh, now that my eyes have been looking at it for a while. So I've lost a lot of red here. Can't even say that that's a red apple. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back that red, do another pass. Seeing a little bit of, uh, of a violety hue here. I'll go ahead and layer in some blue. Again, I'm making sure that this kind of helps this form out. I'm not doing it just blindly because I think there's some violet there. I'm just trying to remember where my highlights are. They're here and here. Now you're starting to see those highlights jump out a little bit, I think. Layer in some more blue because I see another little bit of purple hue here. to this red. So you can see that there's almost no pure red at this point, which is a good thing. So at the end, when there aren't any pure colors left and I want to just like knock some nice rich color in there, I can totally do that because I haven't been putting that much pressure down. So the way to get this really realistic looking is just to spend hours and hours and hours working on it, which isn't going to happen tonight, but uh, it's definitely doable. I noticed that there's like a kind of a neutral uh, on the top outline of that, which is really interesting to me. So I'm going to approach this neutral with complementary colors using uh, a little uh, red and green. I notice it's a little dark too, which is nice. And I'm going to create my green with uh, yellow and blue. Okay. Now I'm going to go kind of more direct on the uh, on the stem because I've been ignoring that. I'm just going to take this dark sort of like brown violet. Which I know is pretty dark on that side. And then I'm going to layer in some yellow over that. Pretty much instant neutral brown. I know that the shadow is going to be kind of a cool green. I might even layer in some red just to like knock it down a little bit. Then inside the uh, tray where the stem is. There's always that kind of uh, wood-looking brown spot. 
and you create the neutrals by mixing complementary colors. So we're gonna, you know, just mix uh, green and red, pretty easy. Give us sort of a brownish tone. And then I notice kind of like around this, around this ring, the brown, there's, um, try to get the deep value in there. Here I'm starting to get towards the end of the, end of the drawing for the sake of the lesson anyway. I'm going to pick a couple of dark spots to work into. And right around the ring of the drawing, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty bluish. Or the ring of the brown, it's pretty blue. So that's going to create some interest. So to balance out the colors, what you're always doing is bringing colors from one area into the other so that this all kind of like relates. And you're really starting to see the apple kind of come out, especially if you, if you start to squint your eyes, you know. Um, and what I'm kind of doing is as I get into details, I'm just kind of like, going, okay, well, I've looked at that detail overall, what you know, what am I seeing? So I'm flipping back back and forth between modes of like, you know, getting pretty myopic, uh, looking at the details, and then generally, am I going in the right direction? So here I'm starting to bump up the saturation of the, of the red, I'm starting to get into more of a like man level. So here's where it's going to start, you know, you're gonna see the dramatic changes. I've only, and I can only do this once I've set up the base of, of color. Um, and this is really gonna look pretty interesting. Is it perfect red? Is it photorealistic? No, but it is, uh, uh, it is realistic in that it's not color wheel red layered on color wheel red. Uh, it's more existing in these uh, uh, neutral tones, neutral colors. If you're doing skin tones, that's a whole other ball game that's really tricky, but you're going to approach it in basically the same way. You're going to see like what area of the skin is greenish, what area of the skin is reddish, what's got cool colors, what's got warm colors, and, and approach it from there. Uh, but it's good to start with still ice for a while. So here we're definitely getting more into a, into a red apple. Make sure to bring plenty of this red into the, into the shadow. just to warm it up a little bit. So, down here, I'm gonna actually switch into a cooler red. With this violet color. I'm gonna work with uh, Sort of a neutral, got neutral brown again. And here, I know that this area is going to be real dark. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving that into that direction. And the contour of the, uh, the contour of the apple itself. is going to be a little bit darker. One thing you can do is on the on the contour you can do like a uh, where you know it's going to be pretty dark. You can pick a color and uh, 
and use that color to uh, do the contour of the apple. It's kind of a trick from uh, Wayne Tebode. Something that a photograph won't, definitely won't do. So I'm kind of alternating in some warm colors with the cool colors to make sure that the neutral's being created properly. So I've worked into uh, into this um, into this apple. I've worked into the to the bottom here. Uh, drawn some uh, rings uh, around it. Use some see some different colors to pull. Uh, to pull the contour in and made that a little more interesting. Um, the Wayne, the old Wayne Tebode trick is to is to uh, ring some uh, outline. Use uh, use an intense color for the outline. Um, and you can kind of change that as you go around the contour, and that can make for uh, for an interesting little. Uh, set of details. So there I've created a start towards a realistic apple um, I could spend hours on this, just kind of uh, refining it, but uh, that's how you uh, that's how you begin to uh, approach uh, approach realism. Let me get a let me get a zoomed in shot so you can uh, so you can see. There it is. All right, so um, yeah, that should get you headed in the right direction. Um, so remember. When you're layering, you know, remember the, the heaven, man, earth concepts, light pressure, middle pressure, heavy pressure, do them in that order, uh, and you can't really go wrong. Draw through your, through your edges and work it up slowly, gently, um, and remember that you're always looking for uh, lines um, and lighting that can reinforce the form. So uh, that's what I've got. Uh, again, this is uh, Mead McLean for the uh, AUsquared.com uh, and this is the Learn Art subreddit. Awesome, awesome subreddit. My favorite. Thanks a lot. <laughs>